Hello, uh, my name is Timur Dabayev and I'm Professor of International Relations at the University of Tsukuba. I will also serve as a Director of Special Program for Eurasian Countries. We uh, would like to acknowledge that we run this program in partnership with uh, generous support from uh, Nippon Foundation. The today's talk on how to make international community of Central Asian Studies coherent is a part of a series of lectures on Central Eurasian Studies uh, in East Asia and beyond. Uh, for those who missed our previous talks or want to revisit um, uh, the talks, you know, I would like to invite you to visit our YouTube channel where uh, all the talks are um, going to be uploaded as soon as we complete the online sessions. The uh, structure of the talks is the following. Um, they start with our main speakers delivering their introductory points, followed by comments and questions from the floor. I will collect several questions at once, and I will try to facilitate several rounds of questions. Please be informed that all the talks are video recorded. Therefore, you can keep your cameras off if you feel like it. You can ask your questions by typing in the chat thread, which I will read, uh, then read out, uh, or ask a question out loud by using um, uh, Zoom's uh, raise your hand feature. Please be informed. Uh, well, it gives me a special uh, pleasure to introduce Professor uh, uh, Tomohiko Yama, who is the pioneering scholar of Central Eurasian Studies in Japan. Uh, Professor Uyama is a scholar of the generation of academics who joined um, uh, the inquiries into Eurasia at the time of the collapse of the Soviet Union, and who had an opportunity to observe firsthand uh, the processes developing in these societies. Professor Uyama received his training as a historian at the University of Tokyo, followed by his study and research in Kazakhstan in early 90s, prior to joining Slavic Research Center, where he serves as a professor, uh, Professor Yama also serves as a, uh, served as a research liaison at the Japanese Embassy in Kazakhstan. Um, Professor Yama is a president of the Japan Association of Central Asian Studies and a member of the International Advisory Board of Central uh, Asian Survey and Central Asian Affairs. Among many accomplishments that Professor Yama's research findings have been decorated with, uh, his research received 2010 uh, Daido Life Award for Encouragement of Area Studies in Japan. Uh, in terms of his focus, Professor Yamas um, uh, conducts a research into political changes and conflicts in Central Asia, and more broadly, authoritarianism in post-Soviet states and its interaction with authoritarian politics in other Asian uh, countries. And recently, um, 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 the illiberal tendencies in Western democracies. He's, uh, he frequently writes on international relations in Eurasia uh, and from the viewpoint of imperial studies, as well as on practical matters in uh, Japan Central Asian relations, shaping our understanding uh, both from academic and policy point of views. Um, prior to giving Professor uh, Uyama the floor, yeah, we would like to use this opportunity to honor the memory of our beloved colleague, friend, and wonderful person. Dr. Natsuko Oka, who uh, passed away at the end of January 2022, to our great sadness and surprise. Dr. Oka worked at the Institute um, of Developing Economies, which is the leading institution of learning in Japan and internationally about developing countries. Um, Dr. Oka received her training at the University of Tokyo alongside with Professor Yama and later received her doctorate from the University of Leeds. Among many appointments, um, she has a visiting. She was a visiting scholar of, um, at Columbia University as well as at various research institutions in Kazakhstan. She was both linguistically and culturally fluent, fluent in Russian and Kazakh, uh, which offered her a chance to observe events and processes in Kazakhstan without having to use English, which is still um, a very rare case for foreign scholars. She published widely in major journals such as Central Asian Survey and Central Asian Affairs, Problems of Post-Communism, and many others. Her latest book, which is um, on the screen currently, on daily life and fight against corruption in Kazakhstan, has been decorated with the uh, 15th Kashiyama Prize. Okasan is an extraordinary talented scholar of informality, corruption, and migration, ethnicity, and nationalism in Kazakhstan. 
and her untimely and early departure is a great loss for both the academic community and those committed to voicing the concerns of Central Asians at the international level. While we mourn the loss of such a wonderful person, we will go on in continuing the work of focus on so that her sacrifices and efforts had a multiplying effect even after the untimely departure. It is really a personal loss for me as well. Uh, as I came to know um, Dr. Oka in 1999, when I was a student and she was kind enough to meet and consult with me on um, ongoing project at the time. Ever since we were involved in joint uh, field research and collaborated on organizing um, various events in Japan, she was always straightforward and very simple in communication, yet she was unrivaled in her intellectual sophistication and understanding of various issues, which I will miss very much. The last time I communicated with um, uh, Dr. Oka was last month in preparing this series, and we were building so many plans for her to be part of this series of talks. We will miss her both as a scholar and a kind individual very much. So um, on this note, uh, I'd like to pass the floor to um, um, Professor Yama. If you would like to say a few words, uh, please go ahead. Thank you, Professor Dadabai, for your kind introduction and uh, your words to honor the memory of uh, Dr. Natsuko Oka. Uh, Natsuko was uh, my friend from our student years uh, and um, very valuable uh, colleague. So I was deeply shocked and saddened by her untimely death. Uh, and uh, she was um, a truly international scholar uh, who could find uh, a common language uh, both with uh, Western colleagues and with uh, Central Asian colleagues, and also with uh, ordinary ordinary people of Central Asia. Uh, so uh, it would uh, have been uh, very interesting uh, to um, uh, discuss with her uh, the topic of this, uh, my presentation. Uh, and uh, it is very sad uh, that uh, we can no longer uh, hear uh, her voice, her opinion. So uh, let me begin uh, my today's lecture. Uh, can you see uh, the PowerPoint? Oh, well, um, uh, these are photos uh, of uh, the Academy of Sciences of Kazakhstan. Uh, the Slavki Region Research Center, uh, Hokkaido University, uh, American University of Central Asia in Bishkek, and the Elliott School for International Affairs uh, at George Washington University. Uh, so um, yeah, I will talk uh, about uh, problems uh, in communication uh, among uh, scholars uh, from uh, various parts of the world, uh, and uh, we'll talk about uh, possible solutions uh, to uh, this problem. So uh, first, uh, I would like to summarize uh, the main issues uh, to be discussed. The relatively small research community of Central Asian studies uh, vitally needs to develop through international cooperation. Uh, but research interests, uh, methods, uh, and standards vary greatly uh, across, across regions of the world, especially between the West and Central Asia. Knowledge production in the modern world is inherently Western-centric. Uh, Western centrism uh, has recently been exacerbated by neoliberalization of knowledge production. And uh, nationalism uh, makes it diff difficult to share research interests uh, even among the Central Asian countries themselves. The lack of academic freedom also makes research communities in these countries vulnerable and inward looking. And area studies in general are also in a critical condition. So we'll think about what is to be done to bring the international community of Central Asian studies together. Uh, 
and um, Professor Dadabaev uh, already introduced me in detail, uh, but uh, in order for you to understand um, on uh, what experiences uh, my talk is based on, um, I will uh, introduce myself again. Um, I majored in Russian studies and minored in Asian studies in, at the University of Tokyo. I first visited Central Asia in 1989 uh, and also studied at uh, Moscow State University. And in the mid 1990s, uh, I worked at the Embassy of Japan in Kazakhstan uh, and stayed uh, at the uh, Institute of Oriental Studies, uh, Academy of Sciences of Kazakhstan. Uh, so uh, cooperation with scholars in Central Asia uh, has always been a great concern for me. And since 1996, I've been working at the Select Research Center, uh, Hokkaido University. And uh, I took an initiative uh, to rename, rename uh, our center, uh, adding that word, uh, Eurasia. Uh, and uh, this center is the leading institution for Slavic Eurasian studies in Japan and endeavors to expand its networks with scholars in both the West uh, and the post socialist countries. Uh, and uh, we are also uh, challenged to adapt to frequent changes in the methods of research evolution in Japan and the world. And uh, I'm also a council member of the Science Council of Japan. Um, uh, part participants uh, from Japan uh, probably know uh, that in uh, 2020, the then prime minister uh, refused uh, to uh, appoint uh, six of uh, the new council members. Uh, so uh, since then, uh, I have been uh, much deliberating uh, the problem of uh, academic freedom. And I am engaged in multidisciplinary Central Asian studies in two major research fields. Uh, one is the history of Kazakhstan in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Uh, and I use uh, Kazakh language sources in Arabic script and Russian archival materials. And the other is the politics of the post-Soviet Central Asian state, states, uh, both in terms of comparative politics and in terms of international relations. And uh, before the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, there were only a small number of Central Asian specialists in the West. Uh, some of them were excellent scholars, uh, but uh, have some biased views uh, toward the Soviet Union. Uh, so um, yeah, they too much emphasized uh, the aspiration of uh, Central Asian Asians uh, for uh, independence. Uh, and um, had one-sided views uh, on uh, Russian influence uh, on Central Asia. Uh, Japanese scholars uh, then mainly studied ancient and medieval history of Central Asia, uh, as uh, Japan has a rich tradition uh, of studying uh, Asian history. In the Soviet Union, uh, Central Asia was studied within individual disciplines usually as part of the entire Soviet history. In the 1990s, Central Asian studies in the West and Japan began to develop systematically, but at first rather slowly. I remember the annual workshop on Central Asian studies in Wisconsin-Madison, the predecessor of the Central Asian Studies Society, says. It was a small gathering open to scholars from other parts of the world. Uh, cooperation between Western and Central Asian scholars was still in a nascent stage, but seems, it seemed uh, to be based on the principle of equality. In the 2000s, uh, Central Asian studies in the West developed, developed rapidly and became institutionalized. A number of monographs were published and more and more prestigious universities were hiring uh, Central Asia specialists. 
scholarly associations and journals uh, such as CIS and Central Asian Survey attracted more and more participants and authors. With the in institutionalization of the research field, uh, Western centrism penetrated Central Asian studies. Uh, I have absolutely no intention of blaming Western colleagues. Uh, most of them respect the people of Central Asia and actively cooperate with scholars from that region. region. Associations such as CIS and ESCAS have scholars from the region on their board. However, uh, knowledge production in the modern world is inherently Western-centric in the sense that the Western scholarship claims a dominant status in setting standards for research evaluation. I hear Central Asian scholars complaining about low evaluations given to them by Western colleagues. Uh, so for example, some say, uh, why do Western scholarly associations give awards only to Western scholars? Needless, needless to say, uh, Western centrism is not peculiar to Central Asian studies but it has been recently reinforced in academia in general. Under the neoliberal policy of academic management, world universities and researchers are ranked by commercial organizations based on numerical scores of publications in journals printed, printed predominantly by Western publishers. Research works published in non-English languages are often treated as nothing. This system made it clear to everyone uh, that uh, according to Western criteria, uh, most works of researchers and academic in institutions in non-Western, especially post-Soviet countries are assessed as uh, secondary. Uh, some authors um, uh, write about this, uh, citing uh, um, fictional uh, anecdote uh, about a uh, scholar from a post-Soviet uh, country um, uh, whose uh, submission, uh, whose article uh, was rejected uh, by the editors of a journal uh, who assert uh, that uh, the article inadequately, in, inadequately references the existent uh, state of the art and suffers from errors of logic, logic and generally inappropriate style. Uh, such um, comments are uh, in fact common, uh, quite common uh, in relation to um, uh, research works uh, by Central Asian scholars. And um, you know, officials in charge of education and science in some Central Asian countries especially Kazakhstan, uh, are emulating neoliberal Western methods of e evaluation. They require universities to raise their world rankings and evaluate researchers by the number of articles uh, published in journals with impact factors. But the irony is uh, that uh, Central Asian educational and research institutions are not well receptive to Western academic standards even as they try to raise their world rankings. Especially in humanities, few scholars are well acquainted with up-to-date Western approaches. And uh, neoliberalization also leads to unstable funding and frequent re reorganization of educational and research institutions, uh, which uh, degrades the conditions of research and makes it, makes it even more difficult to produce research works that can be highly evaluated in the West. And there are also uh, Western educate, educated uh, young scholars from uh, Central Asia, uh, but uh, they often experience uh, difficulties in finding niches in the research communities of their countries. And uh, another circumstance, uh, the other circumstances um, uh, to uh, disconnect uh, the research communities uh, of, uh, the, of Central Asia and the West 
is the fact that each country has its own, own hierarchy of scholars, authoritative scholars and their students in Central Asia are often reluctant to reorient their approaches. All of the above circumstances hinder the research communities in the West and Central Asia from being closely connected with each other. And the, the most serious discrepancy in research approaches between Central Asia and Central Asian and Western scholars is manifested in relation to topics concerning nationalism, national history, and national culture. In Central Asia, history is usually written as teleological stories leading to the building of an independent national state. Such an essentialist approach is unaccept un unacceptable uh, to Western scholars uh, who prefer transnational or uh, microhistorical themes. And uh, even when the topics uh, are not related to nationalism, uh, scholars in uh, Central Asia and from Central Asian countries uh, tend to study uh, only uh, their own countries. Uh, such covert nationalism uh, put a, uh, puts a barrier uh, not only between the West and Central Asia, uh, but also among the Central Asian countries. Um, uh, I have uh, some experiences in uh, being faced with uh, such uh, problems. Uh, for example, uh, I, part I participated in an uh, international research project uh, on the revolt of uh, 1916, uh, and um, we uh, closely worked together uh, with part participants uh, from uh, Central Asia. Uh, we became good friends, uh, but um, uh, although uh, we repeatedly uh, pointed out uh, that uh, the concept of um, uh, national national liberation. Uh, doesn't fit well with this revolt uh, because um, uh, this revolt uh, occurred uh, not uh, in the framework of some uh, nation, uh, but on the basis of um, uh, broader identi identities or uh, narrower, narrower identities of tribes and localities. Um, participants from uh, Central Asia uh, more precisely, uh, some of them uh, continued to uh, use uh, the concept of national libera liberation. Uh, and uh, moreover, uh, most of them uh, studied only uh, about uh, the events in their uh, respective, respective countries, uh, although um, the revolt itself uh, occurred uh, independent uh, from uh, that, uh, today's uh, borders uh, among the Central Asian uh, countries. And the Russian factor also complicates the problem. On the one hand, uh, Russia's insistence uh, that the Russian Empire and the Soviet Union were always benevolent and never had colonies uh, makes normal, di normal dialogues with Central Asian and Western scholars impossible. On the other hand, uh, Russian conspiracy theories uh, that attribute the cause of evil events to outside uh, Western influences uh, find some support uh, among Central Asians. Uh, and uh, I, I would also like to um, uh, speak briefly about uh, the crisis of uh, area studies in general and academic freedom. The neoliberalization of academia uh, prioritizes disciplines with numerically large research communities and hurts uh, area studies. And uh, governments uh, tend, uh, to tend to uh, prioritize academic areas uh, that lead to industrial development. Uh, the president of Kazakhstan uh, has uh, recently said uh, the time for passion for the uh, humanitarian education has passed. 
priority should be given to technical uh, proficiency. The Japanese government has also made similar uh, suggestions, uh, albeit in a milder uh, form. The lack of uh, academic freedom under authoritarian reg regimes, including in the uh, Central Asian states, limits research themes and their interpretation. In the West, academic freedom in its proper sense is largely guaranteed, uh, but ideological orientations, uh, be it patriotism, or uncompromising liberalism in society and acad academia uh, sometimes limit the scope of research. Academic freedom uh, depends on the politics and social conditions uh, of a uh, given country, uh, and the difference in this situation uh, again makes it difficult for researchers in different countries uh, to understand each other. So uh, what is to be done? Uh, scholars alone uh, cannot change the whole, whole situation, uh, but you can improve it at least in the following ways. Uh, Western scholars ought to be even more interested uh, in the research of scholars in Central Asia. Uh, well, uh, scholars in Central Asia uh, need uh, to learn Western, scholar, Western standards of academic writing uh, their work uh, should not be rejected simply because of their inappropriate style. Uh, Western scholars themselves uh, must read more works and materials written in Central Asian languages and write more uh, in uh, Central Asian or uh, Russian languages. It will be good uh, if Western and Central Asian scholars uh, try to bring uh, the directions of uh, their research research uh, closer together. Uh, at present, uh, gender issues and transnational mobility are receiving much attention from Western scholars, uh, while mainstream scholars in the region are studying national history, national culture, govern governmental policy, and so on. Uh, so uh, the research trends uh, in the West and Central Asia uh, uh, differ uh, quite greatly. If uh, Western and Japanese scholars uh, study uh, such uh, themes, uh, such issues uh, that are popular in uh, Central Asia uh, with approaches different from regional scholars, uh, we can at least have common themes for dialogue. Uh, although, um, as I tell uh, on my, based on my experience uh, with uh, the uh, project on uh, the revolt of 1916, it is, uh, all, it is not easy uh, to come to common views. Scholars from uh, different parts of the world uh, should also learn uh, more about the situation of academic freedom in each other's countries uh, and try to help mitigate the individual situation wherever possible. Uh, of course, um, it is almost impossible for outside uh, scholars to change the whole uh, situation uh, as we uh, witnessed, we have witnessed, witnessed recently uh, with the situation uh, with memorial in Russia. And finally, uh, scholars in Central Asia uh, should study more about the other countries of the region and try to unite the research community research communities of Central Asia. So uh, um, I stop uh, my talk at this point, uh, and um, I would like to hear uh, your comments and questions. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this um, really <clears throat> um, uh, inspiring talk. Now, uh, you know, I would like to uh, invite everyone um, to um, engage Professor Yama, either through the questions uh, uh, voiced um, by yourself, or you can um, um, uh, provide the uh, you know, questions in the um, chat box. Now, um, uh, please go ahead. If you have any questions, um, uh, the floor is open now. Um, Professor Yama, in the meantime, as a you know, in the uh, position of this uh, moderator, 
can I uh, uh, raise a few questions? And then I'll uh, you know, pick up the questions from the floor. Now, the first question that comes to my mind is that you, know, you, you, you define this dichotomy of, of Western centrism and nationalism. And I, I clearly see the, the, you know, the, uh, the both of them. But uh, in, your, in your view, what would be the ideal sort of structure? Is it really possible to move away from this, you know, commitments, uh, national commitments, or, you know, the larger commitments? And so that, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. And the second question is related to your uh, very sort of um, interesting uh, point about the area studies, which I believe uh, is one of the issues we also tr struggle within ourselves. On the one hand, we feel it's, there is an important area of uh, Central Asian studies, but it seems to me that there is a structural problem within academia, which um, emphasizes disciplines. And so when we hire, when we uh, conduct our educational programs, we emphasize disciplines, but then we emphasize area studies. Do you see the structural problem? And uh, if you see it, you know, what is the way out really uh, towards disciplines or towards area studies? Yeah, now that would be interesting to learn. Now, uh, let me collect a few more questions and then, uh, you know, we'll uh, give a floor again to Professor uh, Uyama. Any, any um, additional questions or uh, points or comments? Please go ahead now. Yeah, say maybe you, you would like to start answering and then we'll see that people become less shy. Okay. Um, thank you, Dr. Baifsan, uh, for an uh, excellent question. Um, you know, well, um, uh, of course, it is uh, very difficult uh, to uh, get rid of Western centrism and nationalism uh, and probably um, well, um, such um, uh, some kind of centurism, uh, be it um, Western centurism or uh, ethnocentrism, um, is are inev inevitable uh, for um, uh, human communities. Uh, so, um, yeah, well, uh, on one, on the one hand. Um, uh, we have to uh, acknowledge uh, the existence of uh, such tendencies uh, and uh, not try to uh, eliminate, eliminate them uh, totally. Uh, but um, uh, on the other hand, um, uh, we have to acknowledge uh, that um, uh, such uh, centuries uh, often uh, hinder uh, uh, people uh, in general and uh, uh, scholars in particular uh, from uh, understanding uh, each other will. Uh, so um, uh, we have to um, uh, learn uh, about, uh, learn more about uh, uh, diverse points of view uh, about um, uh, history, culture, and society uh, in the region we study. Uh, and um, uh, the other um, point you raised uh, is uh, the relations between uh, area studies and uh, disciplines. Oh, well, um, we cannot study uh, an area uh, without disciplines. Uh, so um, uh, disciplines uh, are always uh, necessary. Uh, for uh, researchers and uh, for universities. Uh, but um, I think, uh, well, and uh, in fact, uh, many scholars, uh, at least in uh, comparative politics uh, and in some case, in some uh, parts of uh, economics and so on, uh, they actually study uh, a specific uh, country or a region. Uh, so um, uh, academia has um, uh, a great potential uh, to, uh, for developing uh, area studies, uh, but um, you correctly uh, pointed out uh, that um, in uh, hiring uh, 
professors, uh, lecturers for uh, university, universities, um, sometimes too much attention uh, are paid uh, to disciplines, uh, not to uh, areas and regions. Uh, so, um, so I agree uh, that um, area studies uh, have, have to uh, receive uh, more attention uh, in uh, universities. Uh, but um, recently I have been thinking, I have been thinking uh, that um, the urgent problem uh, now uh, is uh, probably more uh, about um, technical uh, uh, Fields uh, of uh, well, the priority of um, uh, academic fields uh, that uh, is related to uh, industrial interests. Uh, so um, we have to uh, think more uh, about um, securing the position of uh, humanities and social science sciences in general. Uh, so. Uh, Yes, there are uh, very complex uh, problems uh, about uh, area studies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'll move on. Uh, Sabina, please go ahead. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, you've covered many important issues uh, surrounding Western international relations and local knowledge production. Um, but we also witnessed that the rise of China have contributed to the development of alternative theoretical frameworks. And many scholars argue that Chinese international relations theory will inevitably emerge. So do you think that it is possible for the Western dominant knowledge production be replaced by other dominating approaches, schools, such as, for instance, Chinese school or Chinese international relations? and how um, as Central Asians um, should we approach these developments in a constructive manner? And what role Japan might play or is currently playing? Thank you. Uh, uh, Sensei, let me just, uh, you know, there is one uh, follow-up question to what you've just said in the previous answer. So I'll just, I'm going to read it out. Uh, fully support the idea to adopt universal Eastern Central Asian lens into global academia. Proposed ideas to encourage academic interaction sounds feasible, but how these activities can be funded? I don't think the West will be uh, enth enthusiastic about this idea. So if you could sort of incorporate this into your answer, please go ahead. Thank you very much for uh, interesting questions. Uh, well, um, uh, China uh, has been uh, gaining importance uh, in uh, the uh, international uh, political, uh, political and economic system. Uh, uh, but um, uh, we cannot uh, so far say that um, uh, China uh, has becoming an uh, alternative center of uh, knowledge production uh, because um, you know, what Chinese universities and its institutions uh, are uh, endeavoring now uh, is uh, to uh, raise uh, their positions um, in the uh, hierarchy of academic uh, knowledge production uh, that is still dominated by uh, Western standards. Uh, and um, China, uh, at least uh, at this moment, at least now, uh, is not trying to um, you know, create an alternative, alternative um, system of uh, academics, academic standards, uh, research evaluation, uh, and uh, it will be very difficult uh, even if China uh, tries to uh, create uh, an alternative in this regard. Uh, so, um, well, uh, Yes, uh, the rise of China um, uh, can affect uh, research, uh, academic research in general, uh, especially 
uh, in the field you know, of um, uh, political science uh, because um, uh, China uh, demonstrates uh, that uh, the previous uh, dominant um, uh, view that um, uh, economic development uh, would uh, ultimately uh, lead uh, to democratization uh, is um, in, reality, in, in reality uh, not uh, always uh, materialized. So uh, there will there will be uh, many changes, uh, but um, uh, not immediately uh, and uh, not fundamentally uh, in, in regards to um, in academic standards. Uh, and um, about uh, so uh, how these activities uh, can be funded. Oh, well, um, what I proposed uh, does not necessarily uh, need um, uh, a large amount of funding. Uh, um, and um, Western scholars um, and Japanese scholars as well, as well uh, are uh, you know, already um, uh, using much uh, funding uh, to uh, cooperate with uh, Central Asian scholars. Uh, so um, uh, what I uh, propose uh, is uh, to change um, uh, approaches, uh, to change attitudes. Uh, so um, maybe um, uh, some of you have uh, different opinions. Uh, so um, I would like to uh, know uh, your opinions uh, uh, more. So I see uh, uh, some other uh, questions, uh, but uh, Timur san uh, yes. please handle. Yes, yes. Uh, um, so we have one uh, question in the chat box. Um, thank you very much for a comprehensive uh, presentation on such an important topic. You have mentioned several issues hindering sc uh, scholars from Central Asia, given some states in the region are still authoritarian and researchers in social science uh, field might practice self-censorship to collect data and to write freely in the country. Considering this element, how would you see the development of knowledge production by Central Asian scholars specifically in politics and IR? Uh, you know, there is one connected sort of question that I had as I was listening to you, and that is the part about, you know, colonization of knowledge. You know, some of us in, uh, you know, uh, coming from the region, but also engaged in Western academic knowledge production, we feel that may, many concepts which are being uh, produced and then imposed on the region are not um, uh, or do not originate from the region. You know, they are brought in and, you know, many narrations are given. So we see, you know, one tendency of colonization, and also we see the, the another sort of aspect, double colonization, when we have local scholars which are brought up on these tradition, Western traditions, and they uh, themselves, uh, you know, um, uh, work on this, you know, uh, concepts, and then sort of pursue this, you know, line of uh, inquiry. I'm just wondering, uh, for someone who is um, um, studying this region. Uh, you know, um, uh, from a third sort of party perspective, not coming from the region, but being aware of this, you know, tendencies. Do you see this colonization or do we uh, over exaggerate the degree of, uh, you know, the imposition of knowledge that we currently uh, see imposed in the region? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Timur san, uh, I see uh, Dr. Nafisa is a viva uh, raising her hand. Uh, 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 Nafisa, go ahead. Oh, thank you very much. Um, first of all, thank you very much, Professor Yama, for your great presentation. I think uh, you've shared a lot of um, our thoughts in regards to what changes we want to see in the Central Asian Studies. My question is perhaps related to Dilnoza's question and transcends geographies because despite a somewhat equal number of men and women as high-performing students at the doctoral level, I think we can agree that women are significantly underrepresented in academic positions worldwide. So how do, in your opinion, how do we make sure that 
The balance between Western and Central Asian scholars also considers intersectionality. And if there exists glass ceiling in domestic knowledge production, as Professor Dadabaev also put it, how do we make sure that those are not exported outside? Thank you very much. Thank you all for very interesting uh, questions and important questions. Uh, well, um, first, uh, um, uh, authoritarian politics uh, in uh, Central Asia that um, hinders uh, scholars from um, in collecting data and write uh, freely. Uh, yes, uh, this is a very serious uh, problem. Uh, and um, we know um, some scholars uh, who are uh, who, who experience uh, serious difficulties and uh, even uh, was were, were detained uh, so um, uh, and the situation uh, differs from country to country uh, so um, in some countries um, uh, even if um, uh, the authorities uh, are not pleased uh, by uh, such researches uh, still uh, they tolerate uh, research activities, uh, but in others, um, uh, free research activities uh, are uh, almost impossible. Uh, so, um, uh, contribution uh, of uh, contribution to uh, uh, political science uh, and IR studies. Uh, can be possible in a relatively uh, free countries. Uh, so um, I think uh, in this regard, um, uh, some uh, success successful uh, cooperation between uh, Western and Central Asian uh, scholars um, can be pointed out. Um, uh, for example, um, in, in scholars uh, from the University of Exeter um, uh, or uh, from uh, George Washington University uh, conducts um, uh, stud studies of uh, e illiberal uh, politics to together uh, with uh, Central Asian uh, scholars. Uh, so uh, if uh, the political situation um, uh, permits, uh, such a contribution is entirely uh, possible, I think. Uh, and uh, about colonization, uh, yes, um, uh, it is uh, often pointed out uh, that um, uh, Western scholars uh, exploit uh, scholars from uh, the regions they study uh, to collect uh, data, uh, but uh, do not treat uh, to treat them as uh, equal. Uh, I think. Uh, in Central Asian studies, uh, such tendency is uh, not so conspicuous. Uh, many uh, Western scholars uh, respect uh, Central Asian uh, colleagues, uh, but uh, the problem is, as I pointed out, uh, the uh, standards uh, of research uh, evaluation. Uh, so um, in this regard, um, I don't know. I don't know whether um, the word colonization uh, is, uh, in in this sense, um, uh, appropriate. Uh, but uh, inequality uh, doubtlessly uh, exists uh, in the relations between uh, Western and Central Asian scholars, uh, and um, uh, the question about. Um, uh, gender uh, equality in research uh, communities. Uh, well, um, yes, uh, there are uh, problems uh, in, in uh, each country, in, uh, in different countries, in uh, different forms. Um, uh, in Japan, uh, the uh, number of 
um, female students uh, in prestigious uh, university, university, uh, universities uh, uh, is still uh, low. Uh, so, um, and uh, the research environment uh, for um, you know, women who uh, were raising uh, children uh, are uh, improving, but uh, still uh, problematic. Uh, so uh, there are many problems. And in Central Asia, um, the number of female researchers uh, is uh, quite big, uh, but um, uh, there are many uh, different uh, cases and patterns, uh, but um, uh, quite often um, the so-called academic bosses uh, are uh, men. Uh, so, um, uh, how to say, uh, some kind of um, uh, men-centered uh, authoritarianism uh, exists uh, in uh, Central Asian uh, academia. So, uh, yes, uh, I see uh, still another uh, question. Uh, can you read out? Uh, yes, yes. So, um... Uh, Tumur, would you like to um, uh, ask the question on your own, maybe, or, uh, or do, do you want me to read it out? Okay, I'll, I'll just read it out. So genuinely, um, appreciate the current debate on the Western interpretation of Central Asian Asia. What challenges uh, the formulation of uh, alternative academic concepts will face in a global order sense? And uh, you know what I say? It, in the position of the uh, uh, president of the you know, uh, Association of Central Asian Studies of Japan, I'm just wondering what are the challenges you see in front of the you know, Central Asian Studies uh, in Japan? And you know, what are the directions, you know, the, the way you see it uh, currently? Uh, any any um, additional questions? Uh, uh, we still have time, so uh, please feel free to answer, ask. Uh, yeah, Nafis and Sabal, a quick follow-up question regarding Central Asian research community. Do you see a successful model of non-Western regional research uh, communities elsewhere that were able to form and produce independent knowledge? Thank you. Um, well, so uh, alternative academic concepts uh, in a global order sense. Uh, well, <laughs> um, I'm not confident uh, whether uh, I correctly understood this question. Um, well, um, in a larger con context, um, yeah, as um, uh, Dr. Nafisa Isabaeva uh, also pointed out um, uh, the problem of uh, knowledge production uh, is uh, related to um, uh, global uh, order uh, where um, you know, the West uh, still uh, dominates, dominates uh, in uh, many human activities. Uh, so, um, yeah, Knowledge production um, uh, is uh, also an arena uh, where um, uh, power struggle, uh, power struggles uh, can occur, um, and, um, uh, and there are cases uh, where uh, scholars uh, with um, Asian or other origins um, became uh, prominent in uh, Western academia. Uh, and uh, typically um, uh, scholars from uh, India uh, uh, have uh, formed uh, uh, prominent, prominent uh, groups uh, in uh, post-colonial uh, studies. Uh, but um, as far as I know, uh, such scholars uh, are not necessarily uh, 
uh, well connected uh, to the uh, country uh, to the uh, countries of their origin. Uh, Indian academia uh, has a closer relation to uh, to the West uh, than uh, Central Asia, uh, but still, uh, as far as I know, um, uh, research trends in India itself uh, is uh, are not identical uh, to uh, research trends uh, you know, created by uh, prominent um, uh, scholars of Indian origin origin in the West. Uh, so. Um, uh, it is uh, almost impossible to create uh, a totally um, convergent, uh, totally united uh, uh, research uh, interests uh, all, all over the world. Uh, what I uh, proposed is to um, bring 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 them closer uh, to that, and this. Well, uh, uh, Professor Dadawa, I, I forgot your question. I'm sorry. Uh, what I meant is, um, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the concept, uh, the uh, in, the um, what is it? The way uh, we can um, um, uh, sort of produce uh, knowledge in a Central Asian community here in Japan mm -hmm. as, as the president of um, um, association. Uh, I think you know, we are in a unique posi position. We are not part of the West, mm -hmm. although we are. And we are not part of the Central Asia, although we are Asian. So, you know, how do you see the, the tendency? Yes, yes. Um, this is an important question. Um, uh, well, uh, Japanese scholars uh, are uh, well acquainted with uh, Western uh, scholarship. Uh, so, um, uh, we have thought uh, that uh, we are in a good position uh, to connect um, uh, Western scholarship uh, with um, uh, scholars in uh, Central Asia, uh, and uh, we have uh, organized uh, many conferences uh, which brought together uh, Japanese, Western, and uh, Central Asian uh, scholars. Uh, we have published uh, volumes. Uh, together with uh, Western and uh, Central Asian uh, scholars. Uh, but again, um, you know, with the uh, uh, increase of uh, neoliberal tendency uh, in, in academia, um, uh, it has become clear that uh, we are, uh, we have some uh, kind, how to say, uh, disadvantage. Uh, of uh, being uh, not um, native speakers of uh, English, uh, not uh, necessarily regular uh, contributors to uh, Western uh, journals. Uh, we have uh, a kind of double or triple burden uh, to publish in uh, Japanese, English, uh, and uh, language or languages of uh, the region we study. Uh, so, um, uh, and also um, uh, the number of uh, young scholars uh, who uh, aspire uh, to uh, become uh, Central Asia specialists uh, are have recently been being somewhat uh, decreasing. Uh, so we have many troubles and challenges, uh, but. Uh, Still, I think that uh, Japanese scholars uh, are in a position to uh, connect um, research communities in various parts of the uh, world. Uh, so uh, we have to do more. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we still have around 15 minutes. So you know, I invite everyone to take this opportunity to pose a question if you have any. Uh, both, um, um, you know, out loud or in the chat box. Um, do you have any any questions? Uh, if we have any additional questions, you know, please, um, you know, raise your hand or um, a voice um, in the chat box. Uh, 
Now, uh, um, Professor Yama, just to take this opportunity, you know, the events in Kazakhstan, you know, I think you know, it's, a, it's a bit early, of course, you know, to, to make any judgments, but isn't this in you know, a narrative and you know, the analysis of how events in Kazakhstan have been covered up to now is a very good example of how the Western academia approaches you know, events in, uh, in Kazakhstan. You know, I've followed on this, and I'm not a specialist on Kazakhstan in particular, but you know, the narratives and topics that we've, we've seen one one trait is great game narrative again russia you know not russia china another narrative we have uh, you know celebration of western democracy and how kazakhstan is not democracy and that but uh, isn't that a very good example of uh, you know the narration which doesn't really provide any kind of uh, local input because all of this you know we've already knew uh, you know we've already known before the events of Kazakhstan. so what is new that we learned from uh, Kazakhstan is not clear to me. So I'm just wondering, as, a, as an observer of this, you know, the, the narration of events in Kazakhstan, and I'm not talking about events in Kazakhstan because I know there are many things we don't know. But uh, the narratives, you know, the, I, I really feel there is so much, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, patronizing of, uh, of Central Asia and speaking on behalf of Central Asia as exemplified by Kazakhstan. Do you feel this is a problem? And I, I really feel that you know that, that this there is this body of knowledge pushed on Central Asia, not necessarily coming from it. You know, do, do you see this as a problem? Um, well, um, uh, actually, in the West, um, there is there are not so many scholars uh, who are specializing in um, inner politics of uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, so um, sometimes some some of them uh, write about um, uh, corruption uh, and especially um, international aspects uh, of corruption uh, and also as you said um, uh, a kind of great game uh, but um, uh, as far as I know. Uh, after uh, these events in Kazakhstan, um, uh, the most active writers uh, in English uh, were uh, uh, Kazakh scholars uh, who work in uh, Western uh, institutions. Uh, so uh, in this case, um, I don't see uh, much uh, Western domination uh, of knowledge about uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, but um, and, uh, uh, sorry, this is exactly my point. You know, we have these people working, <clears throat> coming from the region, working in the Western institutions for Western audience. And so now we don't have to impose the ideas because we already have these people trained and speak to the Western audience because they know the topics which are going to be received well. And the topics which are not going to be able to. so th that's what I mean when I say that the dub double layer of colonization that you know we are at the point that knowledge does not need to be pushed openly you know because you know these people know if you uh, you know focus on democracy and issues like that you know you would be published you would be properly accepted if and if not then you would be criticized and you know exactly uh, the point the people that you are talking about I'm not going to name these people but you know uh, these people as you well know I mean they know the region. But nevertheless, their rhetoric is not much different from the Western rhetoric. Um, well, uh, yes, they have much in common uh, because uh, these uh, Kazakh scholars were trained in, in Western institutions. Uh, but um, yeah, Western, Western scholars, um, uh, well, uh, why uh, they study little uh, about uh, inner politics of uh, Kazakhstan? Uh, because um, they are uh, mainly interested uh, in um, uh, narrow problems uh, of uh, democracy, uh, corruption, uh, international politics. Uh, so um, here, there is a, some kind of uh, division of uh, division of labor, uh, and you know, I don't think uh, these Kazakh scholars um, are uh, 
they have uh, totally uh, same vision uh, with uh, Western scholars. Uh, so um, here, uh, the problem is uh, probably um, the uh, narrow scope of interest uh, of uh, Western scholars uh, rather than um, uh, assimilation of uh, Central Asian scholars uh, working in uh, Western institutions. Uh, and uh, another point, interesting point, uh, which appeared uh, after these events uh, was that uh, in Russia, uh, many uh, so-called experts uh, wrote about uh, tribalism, uh, uh, poverty uh, in Kazakhstan. Uh, so, uh, they, are, they are clearly biased. Uh, and um, here, uh, the uh, problems uh, with um, uh, per perception of Central Asia in uh, Russia, uh, a kind of Orientalism uh, clearly uh, demonstrated itself. Thank you very much. Now, you know, this is the last opportunity to uh, pose a question. We have uh, nine more minutes. If uh, anyone would like to make a comment or, uh, you know, the uh, pose a question, please go ahead. Uh, comments are also welcome, not necessarily questions. If you have your own vision of, uh, yes, Savina, go ahead. Um, yes, I have a question about Central Asian studies in Japan. Um, professor, in, in your opinion, what place does Central Asian studies um, occupy in Japanese academia? Well, um, in what sense? Uh, Sabine, can you? Um, yeah, you is there a great interest? Is the community is thriving? Mm -hmm. oh, well, um, compared with uh, studies of other regions of the world, um, you know, well, uh, the number of Central Asia specialists, specialists is, of course, uh, still not so great, but um, I think uh, Central Asian studies uh, has occupied uh, quite a prominent, prominent place in area studies in Japan. Um, uh, considering uh, a relatively uh, short history of uh, Central Asian studies in Japan. Um, but uh, now, uh, as I said, um, uh, there are uh, fewer uh, younger uh, scholars uh, who specialize in uh, Central Asia uh, than before. Uh, so uh, I have uh, some anxiety about the future of Central Asian studies in, in Japan. Uh, so um, such kind, kind of uh, events uh, that are organized by uh, professor uh, that wife uh, I hope uh, they can contribute uh, to uh, raise uh, interests uh, in Central Asia uh, among uh, younger uh, Japanese uh, and you know, also um, there are more uh, and you know, on the other hand uh, there are more um, uh, students uh, and scholars from uh, Central Asia who are uh, working in Japan now uh, so, um, I think uh, they, uh, that is including uh, you yourself, um, uh, are uh, contributing to the uh, development of uh, Central Asian studies in Japan. Thank you very much. We have one more question. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we have two questions. So uh, I'll start with, uh, um, I'll read out the koizumi -san's question and then I'll go to Akhtam Jalil. Uh, so um, uh, koizumi -san's question, um, uh, Uyama-sensei, thank you very much for your interesting presentation. 
regarding academic inconvenience in um, the West Asia and Central Asia. I think there are social, political, and cultural things. Uh, what about minorities in society? For example, women's lifestyle choices, LGBT, ethnic minorities, people with disabilities. Um, so that's the question. Um, uh, Aktam Jalilov, would you like to pose your question? Yes. I, uh, assalamu alaikum. Kemurake, uh, assalamu alaikum. We are Madame Lay, as she says. Would you let me ask question now or after yeah. the answer? No, 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 please, please go ahead and ask the question. Uh, okay, I have uh, two short questions. First is uh, about Central Asian studies. If uh, sometimes when we attend international conferences in the West, uh, talking about the Mahalla, Western scholars, uh, express that Mahalla is studied very uh, well and there is no issue to study Mahalla. But after uh, looking to the Mahalla inside, to my perception, Mahalla is not studied uh, extendedly um, in terms of uh, regulation of social norms uh, within the family. What do you think uh, from Japanese perspective? Is Mahalla um, can be studied in terms of Japanese approach? This is first question. The second question, recently I've um, watched uh, uh, the program in the Uzbek channel Uzbekistan Tarakh, uh, the Uzbek history. This is uh, the, the channel is uh, recently established a couple years ago. And uh, scholars talking about the history of Central Asia. And the history of Central Asia is uh, united history. This history covers whole Central Asian countries. But because of Soviet history, we are divided and we consider our history separately. Kazakhstan um, wrote his, his, its history in Kyrgyzstan, all, all countries. And I recently um, watched a program with Uzbek scholars talking about the United history. Do you think, Professor Yama, do you think the one day we can write United Central Asian history and what we have to do to write this uh, United history. Thank you very much. As I said, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Koizumi san, for your question. Uh, well, um, uh, Western scholars uh, frequently write about minorities uh, in Central Asia. Uh, and also um, uh, Central Asian scholars uh, who uh, write uh, for uh, Western journals uh, also frequently write uh, about uh, minorities. Uh, this, uh, these are uh, very popular topics. Uh, but um, in Central Asia uh, itself, um, uh, topics relating to uh, minorities uh, about, uh, and especially uh, um, uh, sexual uh, minorities uh, are not well treated. Uh, so uh, this is exact, exact, exactly uh, the um, uh, sphere uh, of research uh, where um, uh, dialogue uh, between uh, Western and uh, Central Asian uh, local uh, scholars uh, are in insufficient. Uh, and um, uh, Thank you, Dr. Akton Jalilov. Uh, um, your first point about uh, Mahalla. Uh, well, I'm not a specialist uh, in uh, the studies of Mahalla, uh, I, but I know uh, that uh, there have been uh, quite a number of uh, researches on Mahalla, uh, but uh, of course, um, Mahalla, uh, Mahalla uh, is uh, diverse. 
uh, and changing. Uh, so uh, I agree that uh, we can still, uh, we, we have still much to study uh, Mahala. And uh, your second point um, is um, closely related to uh, the point I raised, uh, disconnection of, of research com communities of the Central Asian states. Uh, and um, yes, uh, I, I, I personally uh, see uh, um, uh, many research topics uh, that can be um, uh, studied together uh, by uh, scholars from uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, uh, and other countries. Uh, so um, writing a common history uh, is uh, possible. Uh, but at the same time, um, uh, the geographical uh, boundaries uh, of Central Asia uh, uh, are not uh, historically uh, stable. Uh, so um, some, uh, some topics uh, of uh, the history of Uzbekistan uh, have uh, much in common with uh, the history of uh, Tajikistan and uh, even Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, some parts of uh, the history of uh, Kazakhstan uh, have uh, in common with um, the history of uh, Siberia uh, or uh, Mongolia uh, or Xinjiang. Uh, so um, uh, we have to write uh, uh, some kind of connected history uh, of Central Asia. Uh, in some cases, uh, a common history of Central Asia. Uh, in other cases, uh, common history of uh, parts of Central Asia uh, with uh, Western, uh, West, West Asia, South Asia, uh, North Asia, and so on. And of course, with uh, Twitter, with some, some topics have to be studied in the framework of Russian history, Soviet history. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, Central Asia, uh, Central Asian uh, history uh, is uh, very uh, rich uh, and uh, can be approached uh, from various um, uh, angles. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is Thank the, you. you know, we came to the end of our um, time. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank Professor Yama for uh, such a great lecture and for sharing of, you know, his, uh, you know, inspiring ideas with us. I know that you know many of these ideas are you know do not have you know um, um, ready answers, and you know we are going to follow up on this you know throughout this uh, you know like uh, lecture uh, series. So please follow us and uh, stay with us for the next for the following uh, events. We must say thank you very much once again. Thank you very much. We'll stop here. Uh, everyone else, please have a good day. <laughs>